Hello and welcome to this week's video tutorial. We're going to have a look at creating a framework or border that you can use on all your different images. Right, making a start. Coming to the layers palette, you'll notice we're just working on the background layer. The next thing we're going to do is just going to pop that in out of the way. I've got the rectangular marquee tool selected. Going to click down, drag it out over the image to round about that area there. Looks pretty good great stuff. Don't forget you can readjust it by just clicking in the center there because we've got the single selection, the new selection icon pressed will allow us to reposition it. What we now need to do is to come to select inverse because we need the outside of the image selected and if we come back to the layers palette we're going to drop down to the adjustment layer here clicking on this and we're going to pop up to a solid color. This will open our color picker. We've got black selected. We can have whatever color we want but I'm going to go safe and I'm going to pick white by dragging it right into the corner. Let's click OK to that and you can see our framework or border begin to come together. But there's a whole lot more. Next thing we're going to do is give this a little bit of depth and to do that clicking on the FX icon here, layer styles and just on the screen we've got drop shadow. Clicking on this will open our layers styles dialog box opened on drop shadow for us going to come straight down to size and by bringing the size slider across you can see the drop shadow there it's coming out equally to all four sides absolutely brilliant just what I want to do and the next thing is we're going to click on stroke adding a stroke it's got black now as in CS4 but we're going to change this to just a little bit of a gray color there that looks pretty good click OK position outside that's the one we want for this if we just bring this you can see there it is there because we're working on the inside of the mask it's actually outside and just to confuse matters if you have a look at the inside it doesn't look very good so we're going back outside right let's move this down I want something just a thin line I want to give that sort of chamfered type look what we got there 16 pixels looks pretty good let's click OK to that let's take a look at the job so far yep like it Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some text. So picking up the type tool, going to click on the bottom part of the image here like that and we're going to put in what should we call this? We'll call this Joe Blogs Photography. I don't know who Joe Blogs is but he must be a very popular guy. There it is and in it's gone and at the moment you can see it isn't committed. It is still showing layer one. Clicking on the T has remedied that it's now Joe Blogs Photography showing. This means that we can go ahead now and we can edit our type. So if I just click down the first thing we're going to do you'll notice it's changed from the type tool to the move tool. And if we hold down and press down command or control you can see we get this bounding box around there so we can now resize this we can reposition it anywhere on the image as well by just clicking and dragging it around pretty good you can even change the font that we got in there you can change the size but you can see it's just as easy to do it by putting the bounding box and reposition it talking of position let's just take a look as well what I'm going to do now is use command A or control A to select around the area of the type tool layer picking up the move tool. We're going to come onto the menu bar here and on this one here it's the one with the large rectangular box and the square box. The line going through it there on the vertical. Click on this. What this will do is it will just realign the type into the vertical. There you are. You see it jumped so we know this is now right smack bang in the middle of our image. Command D or Control D will deselect that. Okay, right, next, let's give the type or the text a bit of relief. We're going to drop down. Once again, we're going to pick on Drop Shadow. What we need to do is just uncheck Use Global, because if we leave it ticked and we make any adjustments, it's going to affect the Drop Shadow on the main part of the framework as well. We don't want to do that. So, clicking on Size, we're going to pull the size up. Through this comes, that looks pretty good there. You can see it coming through nice and soft there around the whole of the... Uh, the text, I'm going to click OK. Next, fill. Let's take a look at fill. If we just use the opacity slider for a second, you can see it reduces the opacity of the whole layer, including the effects. If we come to fill and we now reduce fill, what this is doing, you can see the text is looking as if it's going to grey, but we're actually removing the black, just revealing that grey, so the white colour underneath. So we've removed the black, the colour we had for the text brilliant or what? 
In fact, I've got an idea. I'm just going to reduce that down a little bit as well, so it's a nice, subtle effect in there. OK, there's more. Now, at the moment, we can't actually change the position of our background layer here, our main image. What we're going to do is double-click on it. This is going to rename it Layer 0, so we're going to click OK to that. Right, next thing, now that we've renamed it, I'm going to press and hold down Command on a Mac. It is Control on a PC and click on the background layer. That puts the new layer, did I say background layer? I met the new layer icon there, you know what I mean. Right, clicking on this and you may notice because we held down Command or Control, it placed it underneath the previous layer, so it's now gone there. We've got white as our background colour here, so I'm going to use Command Delete or control backspace which will fill layer 1 with white. Clicking on layer 0 we can now come in, we can move this around in the image so we can reposition it like that, just changing the composition. But there's more again. What we can now do is if we right click somewhere around here on the layers palette you can come down just on your screen there to convert to a smart object. That's going to convert this to a smart object. Being a smart object, not only can you resize it, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can do what, well, make it smaller then, all right, then make it just as big, you know what I mean. But you can also come to replace contents, and this is where the magic takes place. Let's just take a look. Let's pick another image. That's my original. There it is there. We're going to click place. This is now going to drop it in. There it is. It's arrived. We can move it around. We can improve the composition. We can do whatever we want with this. You can see the way it's moving around like so. If I just use Command T or Control T, this is what I meant to do. We can actually sort of resize it down a little bit like that. You can't actually make it bigger. You do begin to distort the pixels. But what we can also do is, let's try this. I want to make the framework a little bit bigger. So to do that, we're going to come and we're going to click over the mask here, pressing down Command or Control. You can see the way the cursor changes, clicking down. There it is. Select, Inverse. So we've now got the single selection around the window itself. Select, Transform Selection. And we're just going to drag this down a little bit like that. Once we're happy, press Enter or Return. Going to leave yeah, black as a foreground colour. We're going to have to pick up my paintbrush. Clicking on the mask itself, you now notice we've got the brush there. If I just pop this out of the way, what we can now do is we can come into this and we can make this window a little bit bigger. Great stuff. So there you are. Command or Control D to deselect that. So you can make this window bigger, you can make it smaller, you can do it to suit the size of your image completely. The other thing is if you just switch this off or keep it as a you know, an adjustment layer that has an adjustment layer. There's a smart object in there because then you can replace it at any time. But save one as a template. Think of the work it can save you. Don't forget, we can reposition this round as well. If I just press Command or Control, you can reposition that round there. So we can make drop it down a little bit. We can move it up. We can come into this. We can change the drop shadow. We can change the stroke. If I just click on this just to show you, we can change the drop shadow and the stroke there. The whole thing is completely adjustable. You can even change the text itself as well. Go on, give it a try. It really does work a treat. And until the next time, happy imaging and take care.